in the second part of this section, we will talk about how the router actually routes. So here, if uh, 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 any of the hosts that exist on this local area network sends the packet through the default gateway to router one, the routing table inside R1 will be activated, which uh, we need to understand how it actually works. As we can see here, router one uh, routing table includes two major uh, parts. The first one is what we call directly connected routes. So this network and this network and this networks are directly connected networks inside R1 routing table. So these are the uh, directly connected routes. And there is the remote routes, which includes all other uh, uh, networks that are not directly connected to uh, R1. So we need to know how, how R1 really learns about the uh, remote networks as well as how it actually learns about the directly connected uh, networks. So unlike uh, the, uh, the host, which has one exit interface to the local area network, a router uh, typically, in the, uh, typically includes or has multiple interfaces to multiple directly connected um, uh, LANs. And it also needs to learn about the, uh, the, the, the remote LANs, as we will see in a minute. This is how the routing table inside the router looks like. Um, Similar to the routing table inside the host, it includes um, the the major columns, uh, the the destination, uh, the destination address uh, uh, with the uh, net mask, and the metric. This is the metric, and the uh, the gateway or the exit interface. The, sorry, this is the gateway that the router will use to send the packets to. Uh, uh, to outside and uh, finally the exit interface that it has to use um, so um, um, so in details the routing table includes um, the a section which or the a column which identifies how the network was actually learned how the router learned about this network if it's C this means it's directly connected, which means that the router will, by default, include all the directly connected uh, uh, networks once it starts and it activates the interfaces. So once the router starts and activates all these interfaces, it will detect automatically that these networks are directly connected to it. Uh, the, the P column, the B column, uh, identifies the destination network and how it's connected. So uh, 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 th this is the destination uh, network 192.168.10.0 slash 24, which is uh, this one, and it's directly connected. Or if it's uh, a local uh, route, which means that this local route exists on the on this router, which is this uh, uh, exit interface here, uh, this indicates that it's a local uh, route. 192.168.10.1 slash 32. Uh, uh, so we notice here the, the difference slash 32 versus slash 24. So this is the actual address of the exit interface here. And this is what we call the local route for this interface. So um, all the local uh, interfaces, they have such entry in, in the routing table of, uh, of the router. Uh, this is the uh, 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 sorry uh, column C indicates the exit interface, which is Gigabit Ethernet 00, which indicates this one. So if I want to send to this destination network, I have to send uh, the uh, it's directly connected, and I have to exit the packet to this uh, uh, Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. If I want to send to the destination network 192.168.11.0, any host that exists on this network will um, will be sent to exit interface uh, G0 slash 1, which is Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. Okay, so uh, uh, to explain the routing table in details, 
So we have this um, column which indicates how the network was actually learned. And D here indicates uh, uh, EIGRP, which means that uh, the routing protocol EIGRP is the one that uh, created uh, this entry or this raw uh, in, the, in the routing table. Uh, this uh, 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 pink part indicates the destination network and then uh, this orange part indicates the administrative distance. The administrative distance here indicates the trustworthiness or how trusted this entry is. So if it's coming from a trusted source, uh, this number indicates how trusted this source is. Uh, this uh, purple uh, number uh, indicates the matrix and uh, uh, this matrix is calculated according to which routing protocol we use. Uh, so each routing protocol calculates the metric differently. Um, this um, uh, uh, yellow part here uh, indicates the, uh, the gateway or the remote address that this packet should be sent to. And here, for example, it indicates 209.165.200.26, which means that router 1 will send to this IP address across this interface. So the interface here is serial 000, which indicates this interface. So I should send the packet to, to this serial interface to this gateway in order to send to the one of these remote addresses. In that case, it's 10.1.1.0, this network. Uh, the last thing is, uh, is this um, uh, green uh, part, which indicates the uh, the amount of elapsed time since this route was last updated. So if a route does not get updated for a very long time, it times out and it removes this uh, row from the routing table. So that time uh, uh, indicates how fresh this uh, routing uh, line is. Uh, the, um, the, the gateway uh, that's highlighted here, or in the routing uh, table of the router, we uh, commonly call it the next hub. This is the address of the device, of the network device that will receive the packet and process it further. Uh, so for example, if uh, a router one wants to send to a remote network, whether it's 10.0.1.1.0 or 10.1.2.0, these are remote networks and R1 should send to this gateway through the next hub uh, 209.165.200.226 okay and it sends through uh, this uh, next hub to one of these uh, remote networks so that's what uh, the next hub actually uh, needs so to understand uh, this uh, uh, the routing uh, inside a router uh, better we have like four different examples uh, here to learn which entry in the routing table that gets activated by a certain entry. So the first example here, uh, PC1 wants to verify the connectivity to the local default gateway. So if PC1 wants to send to the default gateway and wants to check the connectivity. So in that case, it sends to uh, the address of the interface or the default gateway, which is in that case, 192.168.10.1, which is this interface, in a form of a ping. So I if I want to ping this interface, uh, PC1 will uh, uh, send, will consult the uh, its own routing table, and it will figure out that this uh, um, this is the default gateway address. So it will exit the packet through this interface, dot 10, which will go to uh, routing R1. R1 will then uh, find the destination address in the, uh, in the packet, which is 192.168.10.1. So it will try to uh, uh, map this address to one of the entries in the routing table. And as we can see, this address maps two lines. It maps this line, it maps this line here, 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So if we end it with slash 24, we will find a match. And if we end it with this line as well, we will find a match. What the router does is that the router matches the one with the highest uh, 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 subnet mask here. 
So this is 32. This is the one that it will select. It will not select 24. So this line will be activated, in which case the router will accept uh, uh, this packet on this router and it will uh, uh, then respond back to PC1 in the as a ping reply. So it will send it uh, to uh, the higher layers of routing R1 and it will respond back to PC1 with a ping command back. Um, example 2 talks about the fact that PC1 wants to send to uh, PC1 wants to send to a, uh, wants to send a packet to an address 192.168.11.10. So it's on this uh, land right here. So in that case, PC1 wants to send to PC2. We will uh, check for a destination address that matches this address, and as we can see, it matches this uh, uh, entry here. So. Um, we match 192.168.11.10 with this entry, and it does match, in which case uh, a router R1 will exit uh, the packet to the interface gigabit ethernet 01, which is this one. And this network in that case is directly connected to R1. So R1 does not need to send it through any further gateway. It sends it directly through the direct interface that it's connected to it. Uh, example three here talks about the fact that PC1 wants to send a packet to uh, an address 209.165.200.226, which is this uh, 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 interface of router two. And again, router one wants to send this to router two. In this case, router one will check the, uh, uh, all the entries, and as we can see here, it matches this, uh, 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 this entry, 209.165.200.224 slash 30. And pay attention to this, because slash 30 here talks about the fact that uh, uh, any, any IP address that's beyond 224 slash 30 will be activated uh, by this entry here and um, and this and operation you will learn about it in the next chapter so in that case uh, this network is directly connected and uh, router r1 will exit this through interface serial 001 which is this serial interface and it will be sent to uh, router 2 for further processing the last example here PC1 wants to send to um, address um, uh, 10.1.1.0. This exists on this remote network, and in that case, R1 will try to send it through this interface to R2 uh, for further processing. And this uh, will activate uh, this entry right here, which is uh, 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And uh, this will be sent to this next hub through this um, uh, 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 gateway, and it will be sent through interface serial 000. So in that case, R2 will have to pick uh, up this packet and will have to reroute it uh, further uh, uh, to the next hub. So that concludes uh, this chapter and uh, be aware of the fact that uh, both section 3 and section 4, uh, this section 3 talks about the anatomy of routers and section 4 talks about configuring a Cisco router. This will be done in the lab as they actually contain uh, uh, how to configure a router and how to understand the architecture of the router from inside. So that requires uh, uh, the fact that you have to uh, look at uh, routers physically, so this part will be done in the lab. So to summarize this chapter, in this chapter we talked about uh, the network layer uh, protocols in, in section one. We talked about the main characteristics for the network layer protocol, what is the role of the network layer protocol, and uh, we talked about the main characteristics for IP version four and IP version six, and the 
the short the shortage and depletion of IP version four, which has led to uh, uh, standardizing IP uh, version six. In section two, we talked about uh, routing in two locations. How a router, uh, how, sorry, how a host uh, routes, um, and uh, whether it, lo- it uses loopback or it uses um, the, the default uh, gateway or it uses the routing to the local uh, network and how the router actually works and how the routing table inside the router uh, gets used and activated depending on whether we want to send to a directly connected network or we want to send to a remote network. That concludes uh, this chapter. See you next time.